Uh, I'm going to, if you would, if you have your Bibles, I, since you don't have the papers, if you would turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, I'm going to read verses 12, 13, and 14. Um, I know it's unusual that I don't have the paper, and I apologize, but hey, at least today you get a little practice digging in your word without having to papers lay it out for you. So, um, I, I, it looks like I'm just going to break down and have to buy myself a printer at home. That way I don't have to come here and do it. Mm -hmm. So, uh, anyway, I apologize for that, truly. Mm -hmm. It's okay. okay. It's okay, brother. <laughs> I appreciate it. I appreciate it. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 12, verse 12. Brian, would you like to read that? No, I'll take it. Um, for as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that, of that one body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one Spirit. For the body is not one member, but many. Now, we have been leading up to, in the last number of weeks, the gifts of the Spirit. And we've been planning and, and stepping toward them, and we're trying to make sure that we understand the right mindset, the right mentality to have if we're going to possess these gifts of the Spirit, and they're going to operate the way that they should in the church and in our lives, then we have to have the right mindset to make sure that God can trust us with them, to make sure that He will give them to us, and that the devil don't come in afterwards and take them away because we've gotten something that, that's out of whack. So if we keep our mindset right, we keep God as our focus, God will trust us and can trust us and know that the devil won't come in and mess things up after the fact. As I said before, uh, I don't remember if it was week, last week or week before, I, I've, I've seen the churches operate in these gifts in times past, and now it seems as though we don't as much, and I believe it is because the devil was able to come in and get our minds off track and focused on the wrong things, and we're not using the gift the way that we should, or, 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 or we, we begin to not use them as we should, and, and God had to withdraw these gifts from our lives because he's not going to let them be used for the wrong way. As we've said, God is the author of these gifts. He's given them to the church for the edification of the church, building up of the church, strengthening the church, not to show off one individual, not to, to harm and, and beat up one or two individuals either. It is for the edification of the body, the building up of the church. Now, if we, when we keep these things in our minds, we, we have to remember, uh, and we're going to try to review at the end, that, that, that we're sanctifying our lives, setting our lives apart for the use of God. It's no longer our life anymore. It's God's life. We let Him use it how He sees fit. So when we go in right in the middle of these three chapters that we've been talking about, we see these scriptures that I just read to you. First, God, uh, Paul spells out what the gifts are in the, in the first part of uh, chapter 12, and then he goes right into this, that the body is many members but one body. And he spells out certain things in here, and we need to make sure that we keep that in mind, that we are not our own anymore. We are God's, and by the Spirit... We are brought into one body. Not many bodies, one body. I know that we have a lot of church uh, buildings all over the place, and we call this the body and that the body. Uh, and I see that we have a lot of uh, denominational lines that separate us. But if, if, when, when you're in heaven, you don't see all of that. You, you see one body of Christ. Not everybody that says they are a part of the body of Christ, I think, is they're not all part of that body, but regardless of what building they meet in, what country they live in, or what denomination is on the sign out front, it, it is made up of one body. Now, that doesn't mean that every denomination is a part of that body of Christ. Let me throw that out there. I'm not trying to say that. Uh, I, I don't believe that, as a matter of fact. I'm just trying to say that the body of Christ is made up of believers by the Spirit, not a denominational sign or something like that. So we have to remember, if we're going to operate in these gifts, we have to have God and His body in our minds that we're, we're used for His purposes, not our own. So we are one body by the Holy Spirit. So as the Holy Spirit comes into our lives, and we see on the day of the Pentecost 
that the Bible talked about that there was people all over uh, and, and all of this, and they began to, that I think that was God's planting a seed into these people's lives of the Holy Spirit to, to, to show that there were, this body is going to be made up of many members, of many cultures, many races, many whatevers, but it is still one body by the Spirit. The Spirit brings us in. The Spirit knows how to make Brian and I, though we are different and separate people, to work in cooperation. As long as we center ourselves toward the Spirit, God can get me and Brian doing what he needs Brian and I to do at the right time, on the right subject, or, or whatever. Brian and I have taught this class now for six, eight months or whatever it is, and, and, and God's had to help us work through that. And I've watched God give me certain things that he didn't give Brian. Give Brian certain things that I didn't even have and, and right on time. I, I, but that's how God works because it is his spirit that brings us into one body. We are not one body just because we believe the same thing. You understand that? Yeah. Just because we believe the same thing doesn't mean we are one body. It is the Holy Spirit coming into our lives and, and, and indwelling us that makes us one body. And we need to remember that in this day and age especially because there's a lot of people who say they believe what we believe, but they don't practice it or they don't live it or God's not really in their lives. So just because we believe the same thing, that doesn't make us part of the body of Christ. The Holy Spirit coming into our lives makes us a part of the body of Christ. Everybody understand that part? So when God's talking about the spiritual gifts and how this works, we are one body working together for God's purpose by the Spirit. So that's why it is absolutely crucial for us to submit ourselves completely to the Spirit so that He can work all things for the purpose of His kingdom, for God's glory, not just for what we want or how we want. We are God's body. We're, set, we're, we're um, sanctified and separated for His use by the Spirit of God. Okay? So we need to understand that when we are filled with the Spirit, and therefore one body. We're God's body. We're not Jew, we're not Gentile, we're not Greek, we're not bond, we're not free, we're not any of these things. We're Christ. I'll get on one thing that, that I've said in times past, and, and I hear people say I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Messianic Jew, or I'm a Jewish Christian. The Bible tells us that we are not those things. I, I, you're no more a Jewish Christian than I am a male Christian. I don't go around telling anybody I'm a male Christian and you're a female Christian. That makes no difference. I'm a Christian. I'm a part of God's body. I'm whatever he wants me to be. And I have no identity apart from him. If, I heard a preacher say, don't call me a reverend. Don't call me an apostle. Don't call me anything. He said, you can't call me anything better than calling me a Christian. Ain't nothing better you can call me. Yes, sir. I don't mean to interrupt, but no, no. it brought me to, to remembrance of, uh, it, it deals with more stuff, but uh, 1 Corinthians 6.15, mm -hmm. um, and it states, do you not know that your bodies are members of Christ himself? Right. I mean, so. We are, by the Spirit, we are Christ's body. That's a good point. Make sure that, that, that I reiterate. Christ is the head of this body. You don't, you don't pull the arm off and it separate from the body. Christ is the head and we are the body. If, Christ, if, if, if my head's going to get out of this building, it's going to be because my body carried it out this building. My, my head's not going to walk its way on out this building any more than, than, than Christ is going to thunder from heaven His will. He's expecting His body to carry out His will. When, when He was on this earth, He had a physical body. He crucified that body, and on the day of Pentecost, he picked up a new body, and that body's called the church. He's the head of that body, and through the Spirit, we are that body. We carry him and his gospel to all the world. That's the only way it's going to happen, so we have to keep that mentality. He calls the shots. The foot doesn't tell the head what to do. It's the other way around. Yeah, and then if you go down to verse 17, it, it wraps it up and says, um, but he who unites himself with the Lord is one with him in the Spirit. Right. And we are to be one. It is the Holy Spirit that helps us do that. Uh, we, As I said a few minutes ago, we have to submit ourselves to the Spirit so that the Spirit can do what He wills. Um, <clears throat> we must be unified and working together by the Spirit. You don't have a body that functions correctly if 
All the members of that body want to do their own thing. We have to work together. I couldn't walk down the hall unless my legs work in cooperation with one another. If one leg wanted to do one thing and, another, and the other leg wanted to do something else, that's going to be quite a sight to see. I'm not going to get anywhere. It's going to be a spectacle. It's going to be a show. It's going to look crazy. It's going to look deformed. It's going to look uh, in a lot of bad ways. And that is the problem with our church. We are not keeping ourselves in the mindset that we are the body, Christ is the head, the Holy Spirit calls the shots, and we have to work in unity and cooperation with one another if these gifts are going to operate at all. The foot can't get a, a, a wild hair and decide it's going to do its own thing because it feels entitled to do so. It seems crazy, outlandish to talk that way about our physical body, but I only do it because we see it all the time in our spiritual body. Our, this, that's right. We have to be able to, to relate it and, and make sure that we understand that we are the body of Christ and we have to work together in unity. Not... And, and, and you'll see as we get on down in the next few verses, not uh, I'm the hand and you're the toe, or I'm the head, I'm the eye and you're you're the nose, or any other. There's none of that. That's right. There's no one more important than the other, and that's what we're fixing to cover. Let's jump on into that. The next line on on my computer screen that will be on your paper next week says, "No member should feel more or less important than other members of the body. We are all." members of God's body, and should treat each other accordingly. No one should feel more or less important than any other member. We do all the time, but we don't. We see somebody operating a gift, and next thing you know, we put them on a pedestal. Or, we put ourselves on a pedestal because we see a gift working in our lives. Neither of which should we do. We should not allow the devil to beat us down because they don't see a gift in us, but they see us in the other. It's a mind game one way or another. The devil will push you, and if that don't work, he'll pull you. He'll try to inflate your ego, or he'll try to, to beat you down. And he'll try to get you to do the same to the others around you. But there's no one more or, more or less important in the house of God. We are all the body. Now, if you will... Many of you already have your Bibles up. Um, I want to read a, a few verses here. First of all, I'm going to read verse 12, I mean, chapter 12, verse 18, because it starts off the next section that I'm going to talk about here. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. Now, this arm does what this head tells it to do, not what... That head or that head does. You see what I'm saying? If this body's going to operate properly, it has to listen to this head and do what it says. This head decides how this body's going to function completely. And that's exactly the way things are with the kingdom of God. If we're going to operate the way that we should as a body of Christ, then we have to submit to God's ways. And we have to let Him call the shots. He says what goes. He says what has to happen. Okay? He is set all of the body and all of the members in the body the way he chooses. Yeah. Now, we touched on that when we talked about there's different administrations. God gives the gifts who he wants to, how he wants to, when, and, and for how long. We understand that. But we have to make sure that we keep that in our minds, that God calls all of these shots. We don't look at somebody and say, they shouldn't have the gift because I don't think they should, or... I, I should get this, or you shouldn't get that, or none of that. All of those thoughts have to go away. We have to submit to God. Don't get me wrong. There's a gift of discerning of spirits that will help us know when somebody's doing something they shouldn't do. But that should be a, a talk of the Holy Ghost to our hearts, not a talk of our ego to everybody else. You understand what I'm saying? We have to say submissive to God in this. And so if we keep that mentality right on the front end and understand that we don't go around looking up or down at anybody else. We're just, we, we, we prefer our brother, but we don't elevate people and we don't lower people because of some sort of gift or anything else. Brother Sean, yes. um, chapter 12, verse 3, I like this where it says, and it reiterates what you were saying. For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly, 
according as God has dealt to every man the measure of faith. Gotcha. We don't need to raise ourselves up right. or lower ourselves down, raise somebody else or lower them down. All of that mindset has to go because God's the one that gives it anyway. Mm -hmm. How can I brag about something that was just given to me? Mm -hmm. See what I'm saying? Uh, you, you didn't earn it. God just gave it. So there's nothing, there's no boasting, as Paul would say. There's no bragging about except in, in Christ. So let's go to that chapter, chapter 12. I want to read a little bit here to make sure that we are understanding. I'm going to try to move a little faster, so stay with me. Reading, starting with verse 15. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body... Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? Mm -hmm. If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? Mm -hmm. If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? Mm -hmm. But now hath God set the members, every one of them, in the body as it hath pleased him. Now, I want to make sure that we rightly divide the word. This chapter, these chapters has been speaking about, previous before this, the gifts of the Spirit. However, this particular thing here is not talking about gifts of the Spirit. He's talking about the members of the body. You understand? Gifts are not members of the body. You understand? So, before the gifts ever come, we have to make sure that we do not have a little I and little, a big I and little E mentality in the church. That's not what we're to have. We are to have, we are equal, we are Christ's body, and he will use us however he sees fit. So there is no uh, superiority or, or, or inferiority complex in the church. We have to do away with that. We have to understand that if I've been in this thing 20 years, that just helps me pray for you better in your situation. Doesn't make me better than you. Doesn't make me, you know, tougher, better, stronger, whatever. It may make me closer to God in some ways, but since when is closer to God ever made anybody err? Yeah. If you're really yeah. closer to God, it's not making you err. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? We're getting things out of whack if we feel that way. Mm -hmm. So we have to make sure that we keep that mentality out of the way. We're, we're dying to flesh. We're, we're saying the same thing that we've covered in previous lessons, but we're putting it in a different way to make sure that we understand it fully and make sure it applies to here. So... <clears throat> If we, we understand these things, that, we, that God is talking about his body, and that there, you know, you don't favor one body part, that the, 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 the eye doesn't say, I, I'm not a part of the body if I'm not the ear, or vice versa, uh, and, and things like that, that we have to understand that in the kingdom. We can't let people feel that way, that because they are not the pastor, they shouldn't be this, because they don't get to do a special solo, they're not going to be a part of the body, or or because they're not the Sunday school teacher, they have nothing to offer, or, or whatever. And that can't be something that is just taught from the podium out. That has to be something that the everybody in the church adopts that mentality and understands. Yeah. God, it's about you. It's not about me anyway. If you want him to teach, praise the Lord. If you want me to teach, praise the Lord. If you want us all to sit down and bring up somebody else, praise the Lord. It's got to be God's way. It's got to be God's whatever he chooses. It is his body. And if we understand that and know that there's no more important members and less important members, then we can help keep things in line. When the gifts start get given out by God, we don't all of a sudden think that they're more special than us because they got a gift we don't. Because we know that mindset's not to be here. So let's go down to verse number 19 now and read a little bit more. And if they were all one member... Where would the body? Let's make sure we understand that. If, if everybody was the same thing, then where would the body? Yeah. If all we had was a bunch of ears, we wouldn't have a body. You understand? If, if we all had, even if we had all feet and legs, we still wouldn't have a body. So, ne next verse, verse 20. But now are they many members, yet one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the head to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our comely parts have more abundant comeliness. For our comely parts have no need. But God hath tempered the body together, 
having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked. This is the type of mindset that we need to make sure that we have. That we don't have people thinking that a particular position is more important than others. The Bible says here, those uh, members of the body which think to be less honorable upon these, we bestow more abundant honor. When we have someone who feels less important, we need to love on them. We need to make sure they don't feel that way. Don't let the devil pick us off like that. Don't let, the devil, don't let the devil single us out and make us feel alone because we don't have such and such gift or such and such thing working in our lives. we got to bestow more honor upon them, love on them, help them, encourage them. Because as we said in other classes, you may be the weak one tomorrow. You're going to need somebody to pick you up because we all go through these cycles. Just because we are growing in maturity to Christ doesn't mean we don't have bad days. doesn't mean we don't have problems. We all do. And we need to make sure that we're picking each other up and that we're helping them. God's chosen the body to be what he wants. And we need to make sure that we understand, I'm not special because God chose me. And you're not special because God chose you. We are Christ. Mm -hmm. It helps abolish that self-centered mentality. And that's what's got to get out of the church. Mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest dividing problems in the church. That's why the one denomination dogs on another one. Because they feel like we're right and we're the only ones going to heaven and you're not. It's a selfish, self-centered mentality. God has put the body together the way he wants it to be so that there be no schism. Let's read verse 25. That's where we're talking about that. That there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. God's put this body together the way he wants it to be. He, he doesn't elevate one and lower another, or, or we should. He, he chooses what he wants so that there's no schism or division in the body. He chooses it. He knows who he can trust with the gift, and he gives it to them for the purposes that he gives them, and, and we can't say anything about it because we don't want a division in that body. Now, let's read 25 and 26 together. That There should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. And whether one member suffer, yeah. all the members suffer with it. Mm -hmm. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Because if we have the right mentality, when our brother praises the Lord, we praise with him. Yes. When our sister cries out for, for God's help, we cry out with them. Yes. Because that's what the body is to do. If we put God's put this, this mentality and this mindset in our hearts of the body, uh, numerous different ways as you see here, but if you cut my hand off, my body will react drastically to preserve as much of that arm that is still left. It starts clotting blood. It starts sending extra blood. It starts doing all these types of things to preserve as much as it can. I wish I had a doctor. We can get him to explain it all to us. Uh, but I understand nonetheless that if I get sick, let's say I get an ear infection, my body will work overtime to protect the rest of that and get it well. Not to just, the foot don't say, well, I ain't no ear. I ain't got to worry about that. You understand what I'm saying? We still work together to make sure that things get better, things get improved. We have to keep that mindset. Yes, ma'am. Can I give another example? Because it sure. comes right along with what you're saying. I've always had a crossed eye. I mm -hmm. was born that way. And my eyes have always been strong. I've always had good vision, but my eye just turns in. Everybody knows that. Y'all see me. So <laughs> a couple years ago, I went to the doctor. She wouldn't give me my glasses because she said there's something wrong with my eye. And she said the sad part is, is it's this eye that's got the problem. So now, my crossed eye is considered the stronger one than my other eye that's not crossed. And so this is like you Compensate. said. Yeah, it Compensate. compensates for what I'm missing out of this one now because mm -hmm. of the, because That's I right. That's a good example. If we let's take it a step further in the lines of thinking, you get someone that's blind. What happens? Their other senses extremely heightened so that they don't lack, so that they can still work. I remember somebody talking about Ray Charles. We all know that the singer Ray Charles. Uh, they talked about when it, it, if you take him somewhere that he's never been, you have to give him a few minutes to get his bearings. He said, but if you take him to his house. Because of his other senses, he just walks around, sits down in the chair just like you do. Because he's used to that. His senses have heightened enough to compensate for the lack in his eyes. If we have the right mentality and we keep this we are the body of Christ mentality, when our eyes in the church get sick, we do whatever we can to get them well. When, when our, our, our mouthpiece, our pastor gets sick, we do whatever we can to get him well. 
When, when, the, the, when the feet and hands that, that carry the gospel or, or whatever, when they get sick, we do whatever we can to get them well. Because that's the body mentality. There's no one more important. We don't say, we can't help save you because you're not a hand. We don't say that. We say, we'll help you because you're part of the body. So that when one suffers, we all suffer. When one rejoices, we all rejoice. So we have to make sure that we maintain this body. We have to work together. We have to care for one another. We have to rejoice with one another because we have to keep the body mentality. <clears throat> we have to make sure that we keep this mentality going forward and we don't allow the devil get in here and start dividing us up, making us think more or less of ourselves than we should. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I thought that would be a little shorter than what it had, was. I just think it's very important, along with all that we're discussing, to make sure that this is a part of our mindset, just like all these other things. Uh, and, and I've got a few minutes here before the, the class ends. I am super surprised that my ushers and stuff are still here. Uh, so let's try to review, because what the review will bring us right back up to the body mentality before we dive into the, to the next piece. So uh, we go back and we look at sanctification. Can somebody tell me? What sanctification is? It's Set apart. Grace. <laughs> Set a, I heard two different things. Set apart? Set apart. Okay. As to me, it's a definite work of grace. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It is that. You or me mm -hmm. cannot do it with our own selves. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. We do it through Christ. Sanctification is um, for all people. Praise the Lord, I got sanctified. I got saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Sanctification, you had to keep that. That's right. It's a steady work. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yes, if you look is. at salvation, salvation is a steady work. Absolutely. It's a continual process. Yeah. It's a, sanctification is the, the continuation of that salvation. It's, it's a continuing bringing you closer to God. Yes. I'm sorry, I'm supposed to let y'all answer the rest now, of that. The, the things that we <laughs> used to love to do in our past life, mm -hmm. when Christ come in, mm -hmm. those desires have faded away. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the enemy tries to bring those things to us, then we have grace to say, God, that's not part of my life anymore. Right. And he is a, con like my husband said, it's a continual act. That's right. If I used to drink, I don't drink no more. If I used to curse, I don't curse anymore. Right. Because God has already, you yes. know, beginning to wash me with that blood, mm -hmm. and I've been set free from that. But at times, a new Christian will slip. Sure. That's where we have grace. That's right. We didn't actually mean to do that. It was a slip. So we made a mistake. And God can help us with those mistakes yeah. because we are growing. It's like a child, right. a baby. Right. Sure. Uh, when we become Christians, we're babies. Right. Uh, we're crawling, you know, and we are being fed milk, not the word, because the word will choke us because we're not strong enough to accept all the things that God has right. for us. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a daily walk in a progress. We, be, we don't crawl anymore. We begin to walk and then we stand up. And uh, these are things, the steps, it's just like a Christian, these are steps as a child. As we mature, we can be able to say, hey, that's not yeah. part of my life anymore. I will not go that way. And sanctification separates us. That's right. Yeah. Because when God saves us, he delivers us from, from all sorts of things. Bondage, bondage is the word. He delivers us mm -hmm. from that. Mm -hmm. But there are many other things mm -hmm. that are poor mentalities that we have. Mm -hmm. we, we, we have a mindset that thinks a certain way, mm -hmm. so we react in a certain way if we're put in that particular situation. And those are the things that, that we have to continue walking out. God saves us, but he's got, He doesn't perfect us that moment. Mm -hmm. We have to continue to grow. We have to continue to get better. We have to continue to correct those ways of thinking to separate ourselves more mm -hmm. to the will and the ways of God and set ourselves apart mm -hmm. to do what God wants us to do. Mm -hmm. It's a it's a step-by-step -step process. Mm -hmm. Brother Fell, I, I grew up in the church of God, and I've heard that. I think you and I have talked about that. I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. Mm -hmm. You, you may be, but but it's, you ain't done yet. There's much yeah, more to go. Right. We don't we don't need to wear that as a badge, as if a I'm there, I have a right. Because the truth is, until you get to heaven, you ain't a right. You, you ain't there. Uh, and when you get to heaven, you'll see 
there was no arriving to you anyway. It was all Christ to start with. You were never going to arrive, and, and, and you're never going to. So it's, it's all about Christ. Um, everything she said was absolutely true, but when she said, because we're new Christians, we make mistakes, but my brain went right to, it doesn't have to be new Christians. Um, right. Many, many men of God that were sanctified and filled with the Holy Ghost have failed pastors in, in the past and stuff. That's right. And somehow, I can't help but believe, you know, they, they believed all that, but somehow in the business of, of being a great minister and mm -hmm. all the people and maybe getting busy with, with meetings and things like this, somehow they had to stop spending their quality time with God mm -hmm. so that they slipped. Well, I yeah. can tell you this. I, I agree with that 100%. Mm -hmm. The challenge is, is that anybody can get there. Yeah, exactly. Because when the, when the shift begins... Well, the, because I'll tell you this, I've seen people who still spend their time in prayer, who still spend their time in the Word, and they still have a fault. The problem is, is when they get their focus all about me again. When they get their prayer time, and everything they have all about me, and fixing me, and it's me, 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 their prayer time is, is in my opinion, almost wasted. But, and, and let me back up, because I know how the devil's going to spend this later. That doesn't mean you cannot pray for you. Please don't think that. I, I, don't, I don't find that biblical that you can't pray for yourself. I, I believe that it is a praying and seeking God for situations in yourself that can get you the victory over many things. So don't let the devil spend that when you're not in this group setting and say, well, I can't spend this time praying for him. I'm just saying that I've seen people who turn their lives inward, make it all, everything in their lives about themselves, and that's when that sanctification process begins to stop. They're not separating themselves to God anymore. So constantly they begin to separate to themselves again. And that's when they can fall. That's when, that's when they can fail. That's when they can get, get in their whatevers, their routines, and, and, and next thing you know, they've faltered and they've fallen and had a big fall. And we've seen many men who, who, and women of God who have done that very thing because they just let it get out of, out of whack. I'm going to get you back online, brother. question is sanctification, sanctify. For those of us that have our books and our notes, it's used 141 times. 41 of those times is Kadesh in the Hebrew, to consecrate, sanctify, and dedicate, yeah. to set apart as holy. Set aside as sacred in Exodus 13, 1 and 2. In Exodus 19, 10 and 11, the word there is used is a purification or a cleansing. Right. And that's what you're looking for. Right. Uh, set apart. That's right, right out of the book. Uh, that's what we that's what we got them for. Set apart and then a purification and cleansing. The moment you stop that, the moment all kind of stuff can come back in your life. So it's a continuation. Um, so the question is then, if we know that we start that and we have to continue that, what are some ways that how do we do that? How do we sanctify ourselves? From the reading of the word. Reading of the word. That's right. Uh, by separating ourselves from the things of the world. That's right. That's right. Um, Prayer. Yeah. Prayer is another way. That's right. These are you guys are hitting things out of the book. That's that's good. Um, we've got the scriptures there. John seventeen seventeen. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. Absolutely. Pouring the word of God into our lives helps us to separate ourselves more from this world. 2 Corinthians six seventeen. Wherefore, come out from among them. Separate yourself from the things of the world, it says. Saith the Lord, touch not the unclean, and I will receive you. Uh, Romans 12, 1. I beseech you, therefore, brother, by the mercies of God, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable uh, unto God, which is your reasonable service. And there are other scriptures uh, that do that. We've got to pray. We've got to die to ourselves, surrender ourselves to God that He can help us pull away from all this old stuff. Some of it's the world. Some of it's the flesh. Some of it's the combination of all that. We've got to separate all of that so that we can get toward what God wants us to be in. Is it also you have to separate yourself from, you said the world, but like people that, I don't know how to say it, like, if you're around somebody who complains a lot, you're going to take on their attitude. So you have to surround your people who 
who lift you up and who, who praise God and who and not people who are going to sit there and moan and groan and complain about everything that happens. You you have to be cautious on both sides. You have to be cautious to say, I was an alcoholic before, so I don't hang around with the drunkards because I may be tempted to do so. But you have to be careful on the other end that you don't so isolate yourself from the world that you're no longer good to the world. You understand what I'm saying? No. You don't say, I'm only going to associate myself with Christian people because then when are you ever going to touch the laws? You understand? Right. So it's, it's a, you've got to keep your boundaries. The Bible talks constantly about everything in moderation. We need to keep that mindset when we do things. Don't swing way away from, from everything that, that would, would minister to the world, but don't be caught up in it either. Uh, and we need to make sure that we keep that constant balance. That would be to help you, Monica, is you don't have to befriend them and hang out with them and live that life with yeah. them. You don't have to be completely separated. But, of course, I don't go to the bars now and hang out on the stool and say, look, everybody, I'm saved. I don't drink anymore. That's not the plan of it. Not because I'm tempted, but because I need to be there and be a light. But you can't run from these people. You have to be there with them, and, and you got to work with them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you just you gotta you gotta be the light. Mm -hmm. You don't have to be their friend in, in that perspective. But there is a separation of that old lifestyle. So yes, I, I agree 100. percent right. Let me hit them. Absolutely, they see that change. They see that separation, right. and that becomes a witness. I want to hit this last piece of sanctification because I feel like we've. We've dug so much into 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and 14 that we forgot that this section began with sanctification. Sanctification is going to help us flow into uh, the gifts of the Spirit because when we understand that we are set apart, you'll see in the lesson, if you go back and review, set apart for God's purpose, not just to be different, not to just, just separate yourselves, but we're set apart for God's purpose. That's the part of sanctification that begins the process, and then we have to separate ourselves from our old habits. We're dying to ourselves. That's the other, that's part two of sanctification in our lesson. Um, uh, Christ is the only good thing. We don't have anything good to offer. We only can die to ourselves and surrender our ways to God and let Him live through us because that's the, that's the part of sanctification. We're dying to ourselves. We don't need to feel like that we have so much to offer because it's when we get self, me, my, and I, and focused on that, that we start thinking that we have more say in this kingdom of God than we do when we don't. As we said earlier before we started the review, it's all about Christ anyway. He's the head of this thing, not us. So we must die to the world, to the sins, but also die to ourselves. We've got to die to ourselves. If we're going to walk in God's gifts of the Spirit in our lives, we've got to die to ourselves. We've got to be willing to be sanctified and set apart for God. I, I'm going to stop right there. Uh, we've got a lot more we can continue to dig into. Uh, but uh, I, I've used up four minutes of those eight that I had. And I'll stop right there. Let's pray. Father in heaven, I thank you for this day, for your blessings, and for all that you're doing in our lives. I thank you for walking us through your word, God. And I pray that you would help us to hear what you have to say. Give us the strength to apply it each and every day of our lives, not just on Sunday. Help us to dig deeper through the week than we're able to do here on Sunday. Help us to apply it. Father, be with us and keep us in your will.